Okay, let's welcome our panel up to the stage. Um, so uh, the session before this one uh, was on the front end of things. Uh, Brian uh, led the, the discussion on the consumer side of things. Um, and somebody made the comment on how the enterprise side of things uh, was kind of boring. I think these guys might say the opposite. Um, there is some, some sexiness to enterprise, uh, and we're going to learn a little bit more about that now. Um, on our panel, uh, we've got a, 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 a nice variety of, of, uh, of texture here. Um, I'd like to welcome Eddie, Eddie Miller uh, from Greenrush. <laughs> Kyle Sherman from Flow Hub. Cy Scott from Headset. And David Drake from Smoke Reports. All right. I think you guys did it. We're done. Awesome. <laughs> All right. If you guys uh, is down the line, David, why don't we start with you? Uh, okay. Introduce yourself. Just explain a little bit about your company and what you're aiming to achieve. Sure. Uh, my name is David Drake. I'm the CEO and founder of SmokeReports.com. Uh, uh, into your microphone as best as you can. Sorry. Yeah. Into the microphone. Can you hear me better now? Awesome. Um, so uh, I started Smoke Reports in 2008 as a cannabis strain database to bring some light to the seed companies and the genetics and all the hard work that have been done in the cannabis industry. And uh, since then have uh, moved to the Silicon Valley and uh, grown an entire vertical platform. We now have over 20,000 different strains, extracts, edibles, and we're really trying to bring light to the producers who have been working hard for generations to bring this to you and uh, bring better information to the cannabis industry and make it more available to uh, the everyday consumer and, and business people too. Fantastic. Eddie. All right. Hi, everybody. My name is Eddie Miller, and I am the chief strategy officer and co-founder of Greenrush. Greenrush is a cannabis delivery platform. What we do is we empower delivery services and retailers to actually make tremendous sales. Our business is all about getting the menus of our retailers and our clients up on the internet, up in our mobile web website, and getting consumers to actually engage, order product, and do it often, and reorder, and reorder easily. So our goal really is to make sure that all of the people that we work with they do a lot more business and make a hell of a lot more money. Excellent. Cy? Hello, everybody. <clears throat> My name is Cy Scott. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Headset. So we're a platform for retailers, uh, dispensaries, product manufacturers to really get actual insights into what's going on in their own data, their own analytics, as well as what's happening in the market. So a really unique way to look at the uh, industry. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Here, one more. Now you get to hear it again. All right, there we go. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I thought that sounded quiet. So my name is Cy Scott. I'm one of the co-founders and I'm the CEO of uh, Headset. So we're a platform for retailers, dispensary owners, uh, product manage manufacturers to really uh, get actionable insights into their own data as well as what's happening in the marketplace. A real unique way to see what's going on around them. So you can make really informed decisions, save time, save money, and really maximize your opportunities. Um, we're a very new uh, platform. We actually just launched our beta for retailers last week uh, in Washington. Um, we're here, obviously, to connect with the California audience, but we've been in the industry quite some time. We're also the founders of Leafly, um, so we did that uh, about five plus years ago. I uh, sold that to Private Deer Holdings, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. Um, worked with them for quite some years, and now we're on to our next endeavor, which is Headset. So we have a booth. Come visit us. Kyle. What's up, guys? Uh, it's so excited to be here. So I'm in from Denver. Um, so last year, I was actually I was helping a buddy set up his vertically integrated supply chain uh, in Denver, Colorado. And um, you know, while there, I was kind of dealing with regulations, and I, I learned a, a whole lot about what um, what we you know what we had to do to report to the state. And um, there was really no great software platform available for us. And so I was really not impressed with uh, with uh, the platforms that were uh, that people were were using. And so um, I, I reached out to over 100 business owners around the country. 
country and I found out that they all felt the same way, that there was no great, easy to use platform to help them manage their supply chain. And so uh, that was kind of the beginning of FlowHub. And, and uh, since then, we've built uh, an entire seed to sale platform. We have a grow management system and we invented this little tool called the Nug. So a lot of people have moved away from pencil and paper into this kind of digital world, right? So now instead of writing things down by hand and reporting it back to a terminal, you can just scan tags and, and it gets reported to the state. So we've made this like really seamless, um, we, we've kind of like taken this really like uh, hard process and made it seamless for, for business owners. And we've really wanted to um, increase the visibility of uh, supply chains for business owners in this space. And I think we've done a really good job so far of accomplishing that. And we're, uh, we're working with some of the largest retailers and growers in the industry and learning a lot about what enterprise cannabis looks like so we're really excited about uh, the future we're also very new uh, we really just started in April so we've uh, made a lot of headway there's 15 of us now and we're just cranking away and we're just so pumped to be a part of this business and uh, and we're so excited to drive the industry forward so that's what we're doing at flow hub excellent um, all right so I'm gonna bat out some questions but I just want to uh, say that we want this to be a dynamic conversation so feel free to raise your hand and and participate, because I think that's what it's all about, right? It's all about the conversation. Um, so it's been an interesting uh, year this year. You guys probably saw some challenges that you didn't quite anticipate. Um, maybe one by one, is, is, was there an unsurmountable challenge that you guys thought might be impossible this year that you actually cleared? And how does that set you up for success in 2016? Like, are, how are you guys able to use your, your, your challenges as opportunity? Um, so uh, one of the big challenges that we had is we were really interested in making sure that everybody had access to the information that we were gathering and have been gathering for years. So um, a few months ago, we finally were able to release a completely open API so that the entire industry has a good source of data to build on top of. Um, and since then, we've had hundreds of people, um, whether it be researchers or app developers, be able to use our API to start to grow their business and get an idea of, of what the overarching structure of the cannabis industry looks like so that we can all build something a little bit better together. Um, I, I thought it was an insurmountable thing with how complicated uh, cannabis is and how many different products there really are out there and how many different people are involved with it. Um, but we were able to come together with a really successful structure and um, we have a lot of people who are really enjoying it. Yeah, I'm going to piggyback on that. Uh, we're, we're kind of solving similar problems in that sense, um, trying to standardize a lot of these products. And um, like David mentioned, it's, it's crazy, the fragmentations and the, the, sh the raw sheer number of products that are out there, whether it's you know branded flour or just flour grown by a certain dispensary in Colorado, all the way down to certain edibles. To be able to track that and bring that all together uh, into kind of the SKU level, uh, you know, we don't have UPCs in this industry. so. Uh, kind of solving that, and we've got some clever systems too, and it's great that uh, at Smoke Reports they're opening up a lot of that stuff, and I think um, that's a good trend, you know, kind of these standardizations and trying to get some semblance of um, some sort of skew type system so we can better track what's going on out there, and I think it'll really help everybody. So we had similar challenge there. Uh, we've come up with some solutions, um, but we've got a long way to go as we're just starting ourselves. I'm actually going to piggyback on that as well. So, uh, you know, a big challenge for us was uh, working with the state uh, system in Colorado. And so we actually lobbied the Colorado government there and the Department of Revenue and the MED to open up the APIs at the state level so we could report directly to them. And so that's been a really incredible process. They've opened it up for us. And, you know, we're actually in the middle of, of syncing all of that data and, and syncing our platforms together. So it's really exciting. And kind of what that's led us to, to do is actually develop uh, our system early for Oregon because they're doing the same thing. They also are based on the same state system. Uh, it's, it's a system called Metric. It's by a company uh, called Franwell out of Florida. And it's a, it's a really, um, it's been really interesting. I mean, open APIs in this business are really important. And I think that's something that, that we're really focused on at our company, FlowHub. You know, we're, we've, we've built this kind of platform to power growers, enable growers to manage their cultivations better. And then we have our point of sale to help retailers uh, and enable retailers to manage their, um, their, their retail environment better and gain better metrics. But on top of that, we have an open API that allows third parties to write apps on top of our platform and an example of that is a company called Baker and they're um, and they're a pickup service and so they're currently writing an app on our point of sale to allow uh, retailers to um, basically have customers pick up flour and pre-order and so it's those kinds of things that I think are really going to bring this industry to the next level and are really important so open APIs I think it's, it's such an important thing it's so cool what you guys are doing I mean it's really it's really vital and that's how I mean that that enables all of us up here to work together as well and, and just push the industry forward so and anyway, great work what you guys are 
Very much agreed. I think, and I think this is uh, reminiscent of any technology platform or industry, uh, our biggest challenge is adoption by our enterprise clients, by our vendors. Our biggest challenge is adoption by the consumers and the users. And that's actually the biggest reason why we launched our company right here in San Francisco. Um, three out of four of our co-founders are New Yorkers, and we came out here because we believed that not only would the user community adopt very quickly, but we also believed that the vendors, the retailers would too. And that is the hardest part, to keep their menus up to date, to make sure that when the customers are actually ordering, what they're ordering is, is in stock. And some of the other software that's here, that's sitting here right now, is going to help enable that and enable that efficiency at the retailer level to make sure that they're always in stock with the product that, that their customers want and that we can always make the sale. And I think that's the most important thing. That's what our platform is all about, helping you and delivering more results. So if you've got product up there and you don't have it in stock, that's not a good customer experience. And for Green Rush, the most important challenge, the one that we'll always strive to overcome, is that we're a customer company first and foremost and so to be a customer company we need to always make sure that our consumers the people purchasing on our platform always get what they want immediately and there aren't any back and forths and second of all it's for our vendors so we take a lot of time and we pride ourselves in the amount of time we spend with our vendors to get everything perfect for them once they're showcasing their products to the consumers Eddie um, sure What's it been like trying to rope in dis dispensaries who are probably being hit up by other similar types of services? What, 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 what are you learning on the, on the front lines of, of approaching these organizations? So that's a great question. Um, yes, of course. In any industry, there's plenty of competition, and uh, you know that you're in the right place when there are competitors. I think if there was nobody competing, then we would kind of scratch our heads and think, what are we doing? Now, that being said, we are kick-ass salespeople. We have a rock star sales team. We have boots on the ground. We meet people. We go down to them. We talk to them on the phone daily. We develop relationships. We use Salesforce to actually track all of our um, activity between us and the vendors. So from that end, that's probably our biggest competitive advantage is that we're such veterans of sales and that's helping not only the enterprises and the customers that go on our platform to make more sales, but it's also helping us as a business because we're growing quickly. This is the fastest growing business I've ever owned. Excellent. Um, Let's, uh, let's dive a little bit into standardization of data, because I, I think that's like the big prize, right? It, or, or is it? Is, is it? is standardization the prize of the first mover in the category, you know, where, where you're the one that, that, that's creating the rules and the construct that people are going to... I think it's a prize for the whole industry. Once it's standardized, then there's not going to be three strains on our platform that have different names, but yet are really the same product. I, I think it's a, it's a goal for all of us in this room and at this table. Sure. So, but in the industry itself, how, how, how does one create a standard aside from something that might look good? <laughs> So um, we actually, one of the, the troubles in coming up with a really big open API is making sure that you can individually identify all the individual pieces of that API. And to do so, we came up with um, something called a universal cannabis product code. And within that code, it actually has the seed manufacturer who made the genetics, the strain itself, the product, and the producer, and the batch, all in one particular 25-digit string. And that unique identifier for everything in our system allows for people to be able to communicate with our system in really meaningful ways. And so coming up with a, a standardization thing I don't think is a prize to be won. It's just um, it's a way to uh, allow us to all be on the same page and move forward together. Um, because as we're transitioning from stoner stories, if you will, and, and you know, uh, word of mouth to needing actionable data, we need to be able to communicate effectively doing so. And so um, I don't think it's a prize that anybody's necessarily going to own. It's, it's going to be something that everybody's going to come up with and, and you know, prosper with. Right, and uh, you know we all have uh, B2B systems, and that's what this panel is all about. And we all, you know, solve different problems, but you know there's some overlap. But having the system be able to communicate with kind of some sort of standardization really does help everybody. So that way, um, you know, Green Rush is able to know if something's actually out of stock because they can communicate with uh, point of sale systems. You know, opening that up and kind of. 
figuring that out across uh, the industry is very helpful. And I think uh, instead of everybody kind of just, well, this is mine, you know, and I don't want to share it, um, kind of having those conversations and figuring out how we can all work together. Because, it, you know, the industry is still really young. It's still uh, early days. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity to work together. And I think if, you know, we're all successful, then the industry is more successful. And that's what we all want. Um, so, you know, five, ten years from now, it's a, a bigger industry, more adopted everywhere. And I think we kind of have to work together in some senses to get there. Sure, yeah, so, so on, the, on the point of working together, I mean, you created your own UPC, mm -hmm. right? Um, which is probably fantastic, but how, are, how the, for lack of an association that's working towards a common goal of standardization, how, how do you work with other organizations you know, to create these standards? And that's a question for all of you guys. Like, yeah, at this conference, there's some business being done and some, some, some things being figured out, but in the grander scheme of things, yeah, I mean, you guys are four dudes on, on stage. Um, how, how do we really drill into to a, a standard you know, that multiple organizations can contribute mm -hmm. to? Well, I think that um, there's already good standards that have been set up by you know huge global organizations. Like when you, you need to go register a SKU, you have to go to one global organization in order to get that. And within that SKU, you have represented you know on the producer and product level um, what that SKU means. And so everybody who has a barcode scanner around the entire world can scan that and get information about that. So I think it's, it, it's on us to make sure that we look at what's been implemented in other industries to make sure that we're not building something that just kind of exists by itself in cannabis, but that we look towards what's been, what's been done in those in other industries and try to produce something similar. Um, the, the skew was, was a huge, uh, huge thing that happened um, to us and our economy and allowed us to track things on levels that we'd never been able to before. And I don't think there's any reason for us to try and reinvent the wheel. We should, we should be inspired by all the different um, things that have come before us. So that's it. Yeah, and to add to this, you know, it's, it, I think what's really important too is user interface, right? Usability, the user experience. At the end of the day, in order to interact with these SKUs, in order to interact with inventory properly, to keep things clean, clean data, um, I, you know, I, the software needs to be really simple. And I think, you know, something that's really important at our organization is, is keeping the user interface easy so that you're able to stay compliant uh, without um, getting confused, without pressing the wrong button, and you're able to gather, uh, gather really um, clean data off of it. So like, for for example, on our NUG, um, what we do have is like, you know, we only have a few options. So when you go to flag a plant with PM, powdery mildew, mold, or, you know, if the plant is turning into a male, you know, you want to flag it with that. We don't have a custom option for that for a particular reason because we learned early on that it's, it's very bad to do that, give someone a custom option when they're running around a grow facility and they're putting in, you know, custom fields. They're not going to fill out anything that's really helpful or actionable at the end of the day. So I think when it comes to standardization, uh, on top of all this, there needs to be a user interface that's so dead easy that these, um, retailers that these business owners can, you know, train their staff in a day, so they don't have to take months of trying to get them, you know, spun up on this new software platform to do this, to do that. It's just no, you know, we're millennials, man. It's like we should have four buttons, and they, do, you know, it's like things should be simple. The iPhone doesn't come with a manual, and and look how many people use one, and they use it efficiently and really well. And that's where we're, I think we're headed as an industry is is cleaning up the data, standardizing things, and making it really simple for the end user. So that's just my little two cents. Yeah, uh, to keep on that, if that's okay, I think um, that's kind of what more and more people are expecting with software, you know, no matter what it is, you know, if you're building something specifically for cannabis, it shouldn't be any different than a service that exists in, in some other vertical that's, you know, has that good user experience that's really simple to use. Um, you know, it's really important to, to bake that in. And sometimes, you know, with systems, there's a lot of things that are out there that you can kind of uh, try and mold into cannabis in some ways, but sometimes that doesn't turn out, uh, you know, the, exactly the way you want it. And it's beneficial if you're looking at B2B platforms and opportunities to kind of uh, build a real purpose-built machine depending on the problem that you're trying to solve, right? I mean, sometimes it does work. There's something out there that you can kind of convert and mold into uh, something that would work in this industry. And there's value there because you save money, because stuff's already kind of pulled together. But being able to kind of do something, um, you know, not out of the box, something really custom, very purpose-built with good uh, UX goes a long way. Uh, I think that can actually segue into a topic we were discussing in the green room before. And, and so we actually had a great debate that we want to share with you guys. And that debate was, what's better for the enterprise, for the cannabis enterprise? Is it a cannabis-specific 
piece of technology, or is it something that can be molded? And I, I have to agree with you that it really just depends on the use case. I am probably uh, a believer of the latter. I believe that I can take 2015 technology, the, the best enterprise technology, and then mold it for my uses and, and for our company's strategy. But at the same time, I know there's lots of enterprises that can't mold Salesforce or some Microsoft Dynamics into exactly what they want to do. And I, I think we should all talk about that. I'll chat about it. Uh, so, you know, it's interesting. We, you know, when I was working in this cultivation facility in Denver, you know, we looked at uh, existing platforms like, hey, what if we write an app on top of Salesforce? Maybe that's something we could do. Maybe that's a quick way that we can create a new app for this industry. Um, we looked at other options like that. You know, um, maybe we can build an app on this platform. And, you know, we, we really discovered, uh, you know, through our experience and then through talking to other business owners and, and big enterprise uh, cultivation facilities and, and retailers, we learned that we really needed to build something custom for this business. You know, when, especially when it comes to regulations and the cultivation process is pretty, um, it's pretty linear, right? I mean, you start from, you know, tissue culture, clone, seed, uh, and it goes through this process of veg and flower, and then you harvest the plant, you cure the buds, and they get transferred over into a store, and then those get sold. So it's a very, um, th there's a lot of workflow in this industry and in this business, and I think no one's really figured out exactly how to do it. And, and that's where FlowHub came in, is we kind of said, like, hey, how, like, let's, like, identify these main things and build a really solid platform around it that's easy enough to customize for your particular, you know, workflow, but that's solid enough for our business and I think you know um I, I think these other platforms like Salesforce are great in, in cer for certain things, right? But uh, when it comes to these like really particular processes that we have in cannabis, um, nothing really, we, we needed to build something custom. Nothing out there really um, was built for this process. And I, so I think, I, I think in the case of like regulations and, and managing your cultivation and man managing your retail, there are certain needs that we have in cannabis that you don't see in other industries that we really needed to be thoughtful about and that we really needed to work through. So. I think in, in our particular scenario, it's really important for us to have a, a custom platform, and our customers uh, actually agree with that as well. Now, we come from a marketing perspective uh, because our business is so marketing-driven, and the the existing platforms that, that are out there in 2015 technology are superb. And so, and we obviously considered what we should build custom and what we should use that, that's out of the box and be custom-tailored to our needs. And so from a CRM perspective, uh, there isn't anything better than Salesforce. And for, for certain pieces of the business, especially for marketing and, and, and customer-facing business, we believe that it was the best and it, it solved our issues. Um, please share, uh, share your... So we, we wrote 120,000 lines of code just for cannabis um, and, and uh, definitely see a lot of our customers tell us all the time they hate the stuff that they're using right now. Um, they don't like the stuff that was brought in from other industries. Um, not only does it not serve exactly what they need well, but um, when you take software apart and you take little pieces of it and try to put it back together, you run into a lot of difficulties with that, um, whether it's trying to just scale out the technology and actually make it so you can use the software on a daily basis and it's not crashing on you, um, or you, know, you need to do something really specific for cannabis and make modifications really quickly. If you're using off-the-shelf stuff, that can take months, uh, sometimes even years. And um, so, you know, when it comes to when it comes to software, um, cannabis is unlike anything else that that this world has done in, in a lot of different ways. Whether it's the cultivation um, that goes all the way from clone to the consumption, um, or you know, it's the processing of it. I mean, it, if it was really so easy for other industries to just come in and do what we do, then we would already see them here. And, and the fact of the matter is, they aren't here yet. And the stuff that they've tried to put into place, it, people are complaining about a lot. So um, it's important that um, some of the stuff is, is very suitable. You know, sales has Salesforce. That's great. But for cannabis people, um, they need cannabis software. And, and that goes into the user experience and, and making sure that multi-generational farmers can only press a few buttons and still be able to comply. Um, that doesn't exist in, in the SAP, you know, big business Oracle world. So. Um, there, there's a lot of need for really, really specific software in the cannabis industry. Yeah, uh, totally agree. Um, you know, we, we did all of ours custom as well um, for that very reason. And we see a lot of that. Uh, we're based in Seattle, so we see, you know, the adult use recreational market. And we've seen some examples of that. A good one is point of sale companies that are coming into the space that don't do cannabis specific um, point of sale systems, but uh, people are using them and a lot of people are switching off of them because they're kind of realizing that cannabis does have some very specific needs that aren't addressed. 
Um, you know, it's not to say that these companies could never do that or could never jump into it. And um, you know, an SAP is, is a great example of a, of a monster of a company, an ERP. But um, one thing that is also interesting about this industry is just the, the variety in, in size and scale of, of players in the space, right? You have the small delivery in Southern California, and you have you know, the 20 location uh, chains out in Colorado. And they have different needs. They have different sophistication levels. Um, you know, some, like with what we're doing, you know, data scientists on staff, you know, is very rare to find. So we have to kind of present different reports. But uh, sometimes uh, the larger companies do have, you know, the, the product line managers or the buyers that need that information. So we try to build a solution that, that caters to all of that. And that's really hard to do with an out-of-the-box system. You know, we had to do that all custom and, and be able to scale that as uh, the industry scales. And I just have like a great example of this, like, you know, this would have taken years to do if we wanted to write an app on SAP, for example, right? And it would have been very difficult. They don't have a great user interface. Uh, their, their technology was built I mean, decades ago, and so that's how they've scaled it through the years. I mean, we can now, instead of using a pencil paper and going back to a terminal, I mean, we can scan these state mandated tags, and I'm already pulling up over LTE what the tag is, and I can send this into another state like Veg or Flower and move it around my facility and track exactly what badged employee did it. This is all custom made stuff, and you know, really, uh, and it's really thoughtful. I think you need experience in this business too. I don't, I don't think the incumbents necessarily have the experience or the knowledge of our business. I mean, it's a, I, I, it, it's a tough business we're in. I mean, there's a lot we have to think about as, as business owners and managers of retail, uh, retail uh, places and, and cultivation. So there's a lot we got to think about. And I think the incumbents don't necessarily um, have that knowledge. And so uh, we're here first, and I think they'll eventually come in and, and, and uh, buy up some of these companies, right? Because they're not going to be able to, to, to just swoop in and and just magically create apps for, for cannabis. I don't think it works that way. I mean, it's taken a lot of work to do what we've done at Flow Hub and what you guys have done. I mean, I, gosh, you've had years of experience in this business, all of us here, you know, it's, it takes a lot of work. And so uh, I, I don't think it's easy for an SAP just to step in and go, yeah, we can do the same thing, no big deal. You know, it's, it's, it doesn't work that way. And to that end, the conclusion that we co collectively came up with is a recommendation that there is lots of technology that can that can further our industry and adoption of whatever technology that is that that makes it better, whether it's cannabis specific technology or just slack for communication uh, within your teams, you can really make your business better, more efficient, and you can be a better company with your vendors as a result of it. Yeah, guys, growth is good and Technological advances is what this is really all about, but do you fear or is there any ha apprehension that this progression can marginalize the mom and pops out there? Absolutely. Don't, yeah, is it, isn't that a concern that you're feeding the beast and now big? I, I'd big like to wine? say I'd like to say absolutely not. Uh, our business is about empowering those mom and pops. So when a company comes out and decides that they're going to be the biggest chain, if they use our platform, then we can help deliver eyeballs to their menu and their products, and we can help them be competitive. Technology and adoption of technology is about being competitive in the market. Exactly. I mean, it's about providing enterprise scale technology to the mom and pop shops, right? Um, you know, we're, it's 2015, it's almost 2016. Uh, there's some great tools out there to, and they're very inexpensive. I mean, this is not, I mean, gosh, 10 years ago, enterprise software was ridiculously expensive. But the beautiful thing is that mom and pop shops have access to this modern technology. And if they're, if they're hungry, they're, they're able to access it today. I mean, we use Slack in our organization to manage all our entire team and um, that's open to mom and pop shops too I think it's five dollars a month so per seven user seven bucks a month per so user and you, you get one free channel I mean it's just there you go these tools are so easily accessible and th the upfront costs are actually pretty small to get in but the the level of efficiency that they provide is night and day yeah, uh, just to kind of agree with that sentiment, you know, we, we're really all about leveling the playing field and getting the kind of insights that, you know, the mom and pop uh, need that, that they really can't afford. You know, they can't afford to staff a data scientist to go out and monitor the market, right? So we have to kind of provide that for them in an easy to digest way that they can understand because they just don't have that kind of scale. So by building platforms like Headset, we're able to kind of better level the playing field and hopefully give them an advantage to survive. I mean, we want, you know, they're the foundation of this whole industry and we, we want everyone to succeed in this industry. So giving them the tools to do that is, you know, what we want to do. By the way, I just want to mention that uh, GreenRush.com is actually free to use. We only get paid if we actually deliver results.
It's amazing. So I, 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 just, I just want to add to that real quick. Like we have apps like this that are available to mom and pops today. Like I, I can go in here. This is one of our customers, right? And um, they, they let me show this off. But uh, it's cool because you can see their total plant count. I can see how many veg and flowering plants they have right now along with how many plants they have in the ground. And they're fairly small. But look at the power they have right now in their pocket as a business owner. They can sit down with an investor and go, here's exactly what we're doing today. And they're a mom and pop. That's pretty awesome. That's a pretty cool thing, I think. I mean, it's a welcome to uh, the 21st century. It's right. freaking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. David, do you have a point? Um, I, I mean, so personally, I, I guess I don't feel that uh, necessarily trying to uh, get every single mom and, and pop on an app is really the way to go. Um, the cannabis industry is a, a worldwide industry that doesn't just exist uh, you know, for investors or, or for you know, super big businesses or trying to get big data. Um, there are uh, farmers in states like Nebraska and Oklahoma and Montana that have nothing to do with having cell phone service or, or making sure they track stuff. And so I, I, think it's, I think there is a danger to making sure that we, you know, we're very responsible to the worldwide cannabis industry, whether it's folks really big and small. And, and I think there, there is a danger that we do try to over app things and, and provide way too much data on the top of things. And it, it does have the capability of squashing out um, some folks who have been working really, really hard in this industry for, for many more years than we have. See, I think it increases, I think it increases the profit margin you know, at the end of the day for the small guys to have tools, right? I mean, at the end of the day, it increases profit margins for the small guys to have tools, though. And I think that's what we're talking about is like making these tools, these powerful tools accessible to that farmer who might not love technology. It's for everything. It's for every industry, every business. Right. I mean, I. And and I mean to to that end, it, it is really it, it, it's people that we're representing here. The cannabis industry is not just an industry. It's not a bunch of big businesses necessarily. These are individuals that have been doing this and fighting against this for a really really long time, and I think that that. You know, to, to answer your question of whether there is a danger to it, I think absolutely there is a danger to it, and being aware of that and being ahead of that is a responsibility that we as technologists should take on headstrong and say, yes, we do want to make things really easy for people that want it to be there, but if they don't want it to be there, then, you know, they shouldn't really have to. That's the way I see it. You guys uh, want to raise your hands for some questions? Question for Sai. Uh, everyone's really excited about headset, and I personally have been checking and trying to figure out um, everything about the company. So if you could kind of explain, you know, how you're going to source some of the data, because I think everyone's really excited to see what we can figure out. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so we're really early, and uh, please stop by the booth if you're curious. Uh, we're happy to give you guys some demos. We have our uh, retailer version live in beta in Washington right now. We'll be coming to, to California really soon here. Um, what we wanted to do is, uh, kind of like I mentioned earlier, is really build a platform um, to give people real actual insights into what's going on in the industry as well as what's going on in their own internal data. And it kind of varies for, you know, if you're a retailer versus if you're a product manager, the kind of, a product manufacturer, the kind of um, problems we're solving, you know, you have very different needs. Um, and uh, we're trying to build stuff that's very specific, very easy to use. So for the mom and pop, for the, the bigger chains, um, and a, a real platform. So it's a whole new way to kind of see your business and operate your business. It really widens um, you know, your, your view, viewing angle of everything that's going on. Um, as far as the data sources, so that's really important to us, right? We want to make sure we have good data sources. And there's, you know, some, there's been some market data in this space here and there, but, you know, it's tough because, you know, a lot of it's survey data, and survey data is, you know, outdated the moment the, the survey's collected. So we wanted to do some more real-time stuff. Um, we're getting a lot of data from publicly published sources. So if you're running a promotion, you push it out on Twitter or Facebook, we're able to, to grab that. Um, if you're listing products on your menus on your website, we're able to grab that. Um, we're also doing a lot of point of sale integrations. So um, you know, if you're a, a dispensary a retailer, we're able to integrate on point of sale systems. So that way we can pull that real-time data. 
Um, now, we don't never share any of that data, so it's never attributable. No one's going to know how your location is doing. That's all completely private. Um, but we are able to aggregate and anonymize that and kind of give people a good idea of what the different brands and products and how, how well they're doing, you know, what kind of sales, what kind of distribution are we looking at. So uh, we're in Washington right now, and we'll be here soon. Um, and love to, to share more with anybody who, who wants to come see it. I don't want to spend the rest of the panel. I could sit up here all, all day <laughs> selling the service to everybody, but that's, uh, that's not really fair. <laughs> so. I've seen it. It's awesome, Ronnie. Yeah. It's incredible. Hi, this is a question for Green Rush. You mentioned you don't get paid unless you achieve results. So what's your revenue model? We take a transaction fee for every transaction that gets processed on our platform. And so until we actually deliver a delivery order for you, we don't get paid. We only get paid at the completion of that order. So it's a set transaction fee, or is it a percentage of the, of the order, or how does that work? It's a percentage of the order. Hands up. I thought I saw a few more hands. Hi. Um, this is for all of you. Where do you see your company relative to the new MRSA laws in California? So we, um, we're basically trying to pay really close attention to everything that's been going on in California. Um, AB 266 and, and 643, and um, there's a tremendous amount of changes that are occurring, particularly when it comes to licensure, and um, making sure that there's some kind of accountability and some transparency as to what's going on in the space. So um, we're doing a lot right now to make sure that we can set up our customers for when that future comes, and they will have to have some kind of accountability that it's not just accountability stuff that they get a lot of stuff out of it. So we're, we're staying on top of it. And, and honestly, I don't think you can be in the cannabis space unless you're um, engaged at the political level now. Because as our, the, the person who came up here before us, uh, whose name I don't recall, but I guess that's sort of a problem amongst us. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it was such a good speech, too. Um, but uh, uh, one, of, one of the issues we have is that it's, it, the fight is not done yet by any stretch of the imagination. So we have to stay politically motivated and stay on top of what's going on. And so we, we're very, very well involved in taking, taking steps uh, towards it. Uh, I'm a big believer in regulation and taxation. I, I know that might be the antithesis to a lot of operators in the state of California, but that's the only way that our industry can really truly move forward and become a very big industry, but also an efficient industry that serves the customers the very best product. So from that end, Green Rush is going to do everything possible to ensure that all of our vendors are properly licensed. Uh, we're going to go through a, uh, a due diligence process with everyone that we work with, and we're going to encourage our operators to actually go and get that licensure that they need to fully comply with California law. Yeah, and then we know we're at Flow Hub. We're actually already working with, uh, we have a little pilot program going out of here with four different cultivators, uh, some outdoor actually, who are using our platform right now to kind of get SOPs in place to get ready for when the regulatory system kind of comes into play here. So um, we're, we're just watching things and we're working with locals and we're, we're trying to make sure that we're, um, that we're available for people here so that when things do switch, uh, you know, there's a great system in place for that. All right, we just have a couple more minutes, and then uh, we have another program starting at 3.15. So why don't we do one or two questions and call it a session? Anybody else? Oh, come on. After all that. Yeah. So I heard you mention SAP. I used to work for SAP. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I'm curious, has anybody uh, talked to SAP? Have you seen if they're developing any industry solution? How competent they are. Um, no, uh, the conversations that we've had, the, uh, there was no information about the fact that they were uh, interested in the space in, in terms of actually uh, pulling the trigger on it. Um, obviously, they're aware of the possibilities, at least at the time we spoke to them, but um, uh, they, they didn't have any intentions that I knew of of actually developing software at the time. Um, I think it's still a little early for those big giants. Um, they, they're kind of taking a passive approach, whether it's SAP, Salesforce, or Microsoft Dynamics, uh, whichever uh, type of uh, CRM platform that you're uh, considering. They're, they're not actively looking in our industry yet, and maybe that's a great competitive advantage for cannabis-specific software. But on the other side, they're taking a passive approach where cannabis companies are utilizing those platforms and are utilizing the efficiencies that they offer. 
Yeah, I mean, we use Salesforce at, at our company as well to manage our, our sales team and everything. So, um, yeah, I, I'm sure SAP will have interest at some point in the future in this business. Um, who knows when that will be? I guess we'll find out as, as the industry progresses forward. But I haven't heard much either. So, They're super big, though, so they could be working on something secret. I have no idea. But at least that's what they told us. Yeah, I think, I think a key thing, though, going back to kind of the beginning of the panel was just like, I, I think you need to be in this business, though, to really understand the needs of the business. And I don't think they have uh, boots on the ground, frankly, at SAP. I don't think they have guys like working in grow facilities trying to figure out the most efficient ways to do things. So, uh, you know, that's where, that's where people like us come in. That's where, you know, we all come in, right? And we're, we're filling those voids. And, and we'll be the big guys. And I think they'll come in and probably buy us out eventually and that's what will most likely happen if you're for sale yeah if, if you're for sale I love compost teas when it comes to outdoor growing actually I think it'd be super cool to build a program that actually was able to look at the how the teas were formed and get some more information about the efficacy of different teas that's, that's a, actually a super cool idea yeah it's a great idea <laughs> that's a really great idea actually all right, we've got to call it quits. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you to our panelists. Thank you very much. Fantastic. I wish we could keep going, but we're against the clock. Thank you. Great panel, sure. guys. Thank you. Yeah, Thank thanks you. for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Miles. Thanks, Miles. Appreciate it. Thank you, Miles.